Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about animal plant medicine. I will be going over some plants and their medical properties um, and how they can be applied to control or alleviate some diseases in various um, animal species. So a little bit of background and terminology. So phytotherapy is the use of medicinal plants to treat or prevent diseases. And these plants have similar properties to conventional pharmaceutical drugs. So spices and herbs have special compounds, mainly essential oils that are able to prevent diseases. They also have antimicrobial um, properties that prevent the growth of bacteria, molds, and other microbes. And the interest in the use of herbal products has been increasing both due to the general trend nowadays of using natural products and also um, it is a field that is very much studied and there is available evidence for the efficacy of herbal <coughs> remedies. So cattle, horses, sheep, goats, and pigs, they make up about 70% <coughs> of the plants that are treated with herbal remedies, followed by pol poultry with a 9.1%, dogs with a 5.3%, and rabbits with a 4.3%. Um, it is important to know that industrialized countries have led to the neglect of natural plant medicine due to the ever-growing ease of the preparation and how easy it is to administer synthetic drugs. Um, it is a lot more common in developing countries. Uh, it is interesting to see that herbalists are actually usually consulted first before going to a vet for help, uh, which is sought only if herbal treatment is unsuccessful. So some advantages to plant medicine. Plants are able to treat a number of ailments in a natural way without having chemicals that have other side effects. Um, it is also it also entails a reduced cost. That is why most developing countries um, use it more, and it is more accessible. We all have spices and herbs and even um, certain plants in our homes, and they can also support the efficacy of other prescribed medications. But it is also, um, we also have to have, we have to be very cautious about it. In some serious situations, animals may need additional tests, surgical procedures, or treatments and certain illnesses do require prescribed medications. Um, so just leaning towards plant medicine doesn't really neglect or, um, I don't know, make prescribed medication any more important. Uh, on the contrary, alternative and Western medicine are beneficial, most beneficial when they are used together. Something that is pretty interesting is a term um, called zoo pharmacognosy. Uh, which is a process by which animals self-medicate by searching for herbs to treat or prevent um, diseases. So it is a form of natural animal therapy where their instinct allows them to choose plants that treat their disease best. And here are just some of the um, plants that I will be mentioning. Also something to keep in mind is that um, this is a very broad field and it goes very in depth. Um, I would be here talking forever um, so I'm just going to be going over some plants, their properties, their general properties, but there's also a lot that goes into their preparation or their application. Some of them are species specific. Um, so that means that some plants have benefits for certain species, but they can also be toxic to others. So it is also very important to do your research or consult a professional before actually using them on your animal. Um, this is a nice um, chart. This is from a study done in Ethiopia. Um, it doesn't really, it's not specific, like I didn't base my information on the study, but it is nice to familiarize ourselves uh, with what plant parts are used more commonly. So leaves make up the majority, uh, followed by the roots, and even the whole plant can be used. Also very common are seeds and bark. Bark is usually made into powder, even the fruit, the sap, or the flower are also used. And they also vary a lot on how they are administered or applied. For internal application, the most common um, is <coughs> drinking, chewing, and swallowing. And then for external application, the most common are smearing, uh, pasting, or rubbing. Usually, you can, as you will see, they are made into a paste or a lotion or um, some type of dressing. And then this is just another uh, chart that kind of explains um, depicts how they the how common the preparations are so the most common is crushing 
uh, fumigating. I've, I read that some kennels are fumigated with cayenne pepper to prevent fleas, which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, and there's also, where's the mouse right here? Uh, there's also pounding and chewing, as I mentioned before. So, um, just to go over, I might skip through some of them because it is an extensive list. But um, cardiovascular remedies include hawthorn and lily. Um, they are vasodilators. Coriander uh, serves as a heart tonic for horses, so it just strengthens the heart. And um, also cardiovascular system therapy is primarily used in treating pet animals because it is not as cost effective for farm animals. Then for skin remedies, there are a lot. Uh, so things such as celery, coriander, parsley, chamomile that we are pretty familiar with. They are herbs that um, are commonly used against ectoparasites on pet animals because they contain large amounts of terpenes. Um, and terpenes are organic compounds that uh, have a strong odor to protect the plant from herbivores. Eucalypt eucalyptus, when fed orally, can um, be used against parasites and a study found that koalas fed eucalyptus actually were free of cutaneous parasites. Also, a lotion can be made out of garlic, lemon, elder, and violet leaves, and wormwood and clover as a flea slash cutaneous uh, parasite repellent. Then tobacco powder and fresh lime that can be made into a dressing that is applied to the back of cows to treat um, against warp flies. Also, um, freshly squeezed lemon juice can be a speedy cure for ringworm, but I think that is also under study like as to the efficiency of that. But some properties have been found <coughs> for um, also, so grapevine, geranium, mallow, and cabbage, they can be applied with light bandage their leaves um, to, to heal wounds. And also we are, pretty familiar also with um, certain cacti, their jelly can be used to heal, um, I forgot the word in English, um, to heal old wounds. Uh, usually people just use aloe. And then for parasitic worm remedies, celery, coriander, ginger, and cayenne pepper, they prevent verbenosis as in pet animals. That's just another word for um, parasitic worm infestation. Because, they're, because of their sharp taste and pungent smell, then certain forages also have empty parasitic properties. And then digestive remedies. So cats and dogs usually spontaneously eat couch grass and that can induce vomit and cleansing of the stomach. So, and also the rhizome of ginger in the powder form can prevent travel sickness in dogs. Ginger has also been found to reduce chemoemesis and natural vomiting it, for chemo, sorry, got it down there. So it can reduce chemo-induced emesis and na nausea and vomiting in pregnant dogs. Also peppermint and lemon balm, when made into an infusion, can get, be given orally to dogs for two days to treat stomach and intestinal illness. Castor oil can be purgative for monogastrics, but it can be very irritant and have a saponifying activity and ruminants. Um, other common ones, so the red elm bark in the powder form, juice of bilberry as a brew, and the um, currant leaves and chamomile can be used to treat diarrhea. Also for small animals, all plants from the garlic and onion families can also be used to treat diarrhea. Um, lemon juice has disinfecting contraction and laxative properties and parsley and lemon verb verbena can be made into a brew administered with vegetable char charcoal for abdominal distension or enlargement due to gas. Um, other ones that I thought were interesting were pomegranate juice and rhubarb or dandelion root or leaves can be made into a brew to treat jaundice in domestic animals and then Fumatory and cleavers and corn flour can be used for the same um, to treat in ruminants. Also, the dandelion brew, if given orally or a linseed brew, can be given topically to reduce the perianal gland inflammation in dogs. So for respiratory remedies, 
to control cough in, in cats and dogs, sage, licorice root, and honey can be made into a brew, or eucalyptus can be dissolved in warm olive oil and massaged onto the animal. Uh, for horses, pine needle and elder twigs can be used, and garlic and eucalyptus, they have properties that can help treat bronchitis, pleurisy, and pneumonia because of their antibacterial activity. Um, here are just another, more of them. Uh, echinacea, the powder form can reduce respiratory tract infection in dogs, and lemon peel, pine needle brew with licorice and honey also does the same for dogs. <coughs> there are also other plants that can be used for reproductive remedies. Um, strawberry leaves prevent abortion in cattle. Raspberry can be made into a brew to facilitate delivery. Feverfew, ivy, and pennyroyal have tonic effects on the uterus of ruminants. And salt water and hamamelis and ginger can be mixed to make a, like, soak the vagina of cattle in order to treat postpartum bleeding. And other general uses, so seaweed can be mixed with molasses and milk to treat milk fever, raspberry leaves, herb robert, southern wood, and brassica oleracea, which is just the species that includes cabbage, um, kale, brussels sprouts, etc. can be used to treat and prevent mastitis in cattle due to anti-inflammatory and emollient properties. Um, fennel seeds, leaves, forage, um, ball ma marshmallow, milk worth, anise, and sweet clover can increase milk production in ruminants, and milk thistle actually increases lactation because it causes prolactin, prolactin to circulate more in cows. Also, mint, periwinkle, and um, asparagus, herb robert, can be used to reduce milk yield. And then another common one, as I mentioned before, is aloe, which can be applied topically to reduce inflammation, irritation, itching, and pain of wounds, burns, frostbite, and insect bites, or it can be given orally to stimulate the immune system. It is a good source of antioxidants, and it may heal um, internal minor injuries, irritations, and inflammation. So I actually was a part of a study abroad where we were a group of students and I were, were t making, doing a little bit of like informal research with chickens, and we had a group of chickens who we were um, mixing aloe in their water, and then another group that we weren't giving them anything at all. We were also giving them multivitamin boost, and we found that at the end of our um, time there, they did reduce, that group did re um, reach their goal weight way before the other group, and also the other group had higher mor mortality. Um, so that was pretty interesting to see. And then I won't go over the whole table, but these are just for reference. Um, it was a neat table that just lists the plant, the part that is used, and what it is used for. And as you can see, it is a very, very extensive list. But that's it, and those are my sources. Okay, how about a round of applause for that one? <laughs> Incredible. <coughs> She has been in my 2.30 class this morning because I made, and you can vouch for me on this one, you can run there. I said, yeah, I oh, were you there too? <laughs> sorry, sorry, <laughs> we're there too. Remember how after the presentation, I said, I wish more vets did the holistic approach? Yes. Remember that? This is what, can you imagine a student doing an internship in some country where they did this? If you're a pre-vet student, learn that stuff and then go to vet school. Wow. Excellent. Questions, comments? Um, go. Can some of these oh. things be used in, in humans? Yes. Yeah. For the same yeah. reasons? Mm -hmm. You just, the, the only difference is, is just the to toxicity levels and how you can prepare them or administer them. But, um, yes. Yeah, yeah, you have to be careful, of, like you said. Mm -hmm. you know, some things you can use on humans and dogs, or cats, or some you can't use on cats and yeah. humans. Like us, we can eat all the aloe we want, but for dogs, you have to be very careful um, on how much you feed them because it can be very toxic. Mm -hmm. I'll let you point. Did you have a question? Uh, so I was just like wondering, does it help people create sleep like, when they sleep when I did not read anything on the the only thing like 
oncology related was the um, one that just reduced vomiting for chemo um, treated dogs, but I did not find anything for that. Well, there's one thing I know, um, I think somebody, it was a couple uh, student a couple years ago, down at the vet school cancer center, they're pretty convinced, at least the student told me this, that broccoli, if you feed broccoli to dog, it helps with uh, urinary type cancer, with bladder cancers. There's some compound in there. And, you know, I've, I've heard that from different sources. Do you remember Dr. Knapp talking about that? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I don't know. I can't remember where I got it from, but I'm pretty much firmer believer because I got it from different sources. So, you know, like Tess and I feed our own food, dog food, so I, I broccoli, not every day, but what's kind of a side meal on the mixing your own dog food? I've eaten more broccoli in the last year than I ever had in my whole life. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, I made this for the dogs, that's enough in their bowl. I'll, I'll let you point out, I think there was another question way back there. So like, in the presentation, I know Some there, lemon peel, maybe one Because kind. I know, like, for a lot of small, like, animals that, like, um, it was something with, like, small animals. Yeah, I think there's even I more. I think I did fruit. mention it, like, three times. Yeah. But lemon I is know, very diverse. With yeah, so I know for, like, small animals, like, rats and rodents, that, like, citrus is actually really, really toxic. Okay. And so, like, I'm not sure, like, Right, you have to do it animal by animal. I mean, that's what she said. There was a, there was lemon juice right in the center. That one? I was just wondering what you meant by like small animals, like when yeah. you're referring okay. to that, because like are you just meaning like dogs and cats, or are you referring to like small animals? I think I just referred to yeah, domestic animals like dogs and cats. The main domestic. Animals. Yeah. Yeah, you got to do case by case and animal by animal, right? Yeah. This morning, I had again. I'm going to go back to the student that gave this great presentation. She. Uh, was promoting a cabbage wrap for mastitis in dogs. You guys, cows. what's that? Was it cows? Or no, it, was it, was, dogs. it was dogs. It was common green cabbage. Yeah, I was looking into it. And it was just it, she had this it's picture of most cabbage. I was waiting for the cabbage to be on the dog. It, it, the dog. it was for most males. I don't know if they said it was. Did you say it was a straight wrap or? It was like a, was it literally wrapping a? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wrap yeah. It. Was it getting like? It and she said you would crush the veins of the cabbage too, the, mm -hmm. so those, those mm -hmm. chemicals can come out. But yeah, I didn't believe her at first. Then I saw like five different N was it NCIB articles on yeah, it. Yeah. I was like, oh wow. Yeah. This I is mean, I'm a firm believer in this. Too many MDs and DBMs, they don't know any of this stuff, and they're always prescribing pills first, and don't ask you holistically, what are you eating? You know, all that kind of stuff that that would come down to. I, I, what a powerful thing to go on an internship like this for a year or two, get it down in your innards, and then go to vet school. Man, you'd have a different approach to everything. Was that the length of your internship for you? Oh, it, it wasn't. It was a short, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was just, no, it was for a month. Oh, a month. It was like a short term. But I'm saying live it and eat it and breathe it for a couple years, mm -hmm. and then you'd be so powerful. Okay, so that means Laura needs to come up and talk to me because we need to reschedule yours because we don't rush these, okay?